All right, here we go. Hey, so everyone, I'm Joe Glines here in Dallas, Texas. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, hey, I'm Jackie here in Denmark. Uh, yeah, uh, I was reading the chat, so. I'll gotcha, you gotcha. Right yeah. Um, yeah, we actually, so we, we started, we, we normally, of course, we, we, we get in here right on time, and then we give a little wiggle room for people to join, so we don't hit record right away, and then we actually started having an interesting dialogue about how people use AutoHotKey and how it's saving time and work and everything, and um, so we were a little late starting because we were wrapping up our pre-conversation. Um, but some people were mentioning in the in the chat uh, different ways that they've they've saved time with it and yeah it's it's actually and I don't think I posted it yet Jackie it's the one we did last week uh, of uh, well there were two right one was yeah on the documenting how you go about documenting uh, the podcast we did on on saving time right mm -hmm. Making, document it well yeah so businesses and or your boss or whoever understands just how much time you're saving the company um, in doing the stuff it's a critical step I think that a lot of people don't do. Yeah, yeah, and and as I think it's Brad who's saying it here in the chat, saying exactly the same thing, right? With yeah, if you show them how well the finished script works, they love it. They see it only taking a minute. Uh, but if you come and say, I have this thing that I use two three hours on making. If I use, uh, let's say, five hours on, on automating it, then I can remove that from my uh, task each month. Right. Um, and, and they'll probably seen, say no, because either they don't think it would only take you five hours or to automate it, or they don't understand what that means. They think that maybe it will be error prone or there's a lot of different things that might make them say no, but yeah, making it, and I think you said it at one point with, well, how, how was it phrased? The thing with um, ask for forgiveness, not permission or something like that, where it, it's, kind of, it, it's kind of weird saying it beforehand that you should do stuff like that. But sometimes it, it does make sense because if you ask beforehand, there's a lot of people who would say no. Right, yes. and then, then you're in a really bad place, right? Because you don't want to do the work. And if you know if they say no, then you're like, now I, I can't automate it, or I have to go behind their back and not tell them. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bad, so it's often just easier to actually do it and then show them and just, you know, that was, well, that's the dilemma thing is like, do I actually tell them now? It used to take me eight hours, that takes me five minutes, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so in this, um, our webinars now are much less on a specific focus, and we just we we have people write in and say they're working on something, and we like to help what they're working on, or if they're you know have a question about they want to solve a certain thing, like we'll live do that. Um, Dale had written us the other day about a script from um, is it Rommel? Is that the name of the the thing? The one hour Scrommel? Yeah, Scrommel. That's what it is. Scrommel. And um, if you haven't been there, I'll, I'll look it up here in a second, but it is a great site. Years and years ago, when I first really started playing with AutoHotKey, I looked at it and it has lots of very small, you know, snippets of things that you can do. And it was a big eye opener for me to go through all of them and just look at the functionality. I didn't use them. I just tested them to see what it did. And, and there's probably over a hundred, if I remember correctly. Um, and it's, it's really cool. So one of these, and it was called Drag King that um, Dale was using. And uh, so I have the script here. And what he said was interesting is when you run it, and then, you know what, let me let me bring over my taskbar so we can see it in the system tray here. Um, Dale's here on the call. Oh, hey Dale. <clears throat> Hi. And so yeah, when you when you highlight some text and let go, when the, the key is when you let go of the mouse and up, it's supposed to do something. Why did that not? It'll <clears throat> copy to your clipboard. Well, and, and, and it gives you a little, um, <laughs> it, it, it worked a little earlier. <laughs> yeah, I saw it work. Okie dokie. I'm not sure what happened. It was working 10 minutes ago before we started. Let me, no, I'll try it. I don't, it's, yeah, it's not because I, I know Dale mentioned it only works in your main screen. This is my main screen. Although, you know what I did? Nothing that would matter, but um, that's the only thing I changed. 
I, I doubt that would automatically update, though. So what in the world happened? It was so weird. Huh. This tilde left that button up is uh, the thing that actually gets it to, to trigger. But could there be another listener on the left button up now? Now that you have recordings running and stuff? I s <coughs> Excuse I'm, me. I'm just guessing. <coughs> I suppose so. That's the only other thing that happened, right? Um, yeah. So. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's just change this to something else. Um, what would be a good one for that? Yeah, the thing with the left button up is, of course, that it works on dragging, right? But right. you could just as well select something and then hit a, a single button like the up <clears throat> key as you have now. That, that would do almost the same thing. But now you have something that's way closer to just Control C. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Is it still not copying it? Even oh. with this change? Oh, hey. I don't know. I just hit paste there. Let's try that. And, you know, I'm going to open site so we keep it separate and paste. Yeah, there's nothing there. So, so somehow the. <laughs> Function of the script has been yeah, stopped. Something went, something went wrong. The, the application that you have there if, could. Well, how about trying and make it full screen or something? Because okay. you had. Okay, so we're getting in here. That's interesting, right? And here, yeah. you know, this is a nice thing. It, it's funny. We talk about it like it's always. Make sure you test stuff before you get into a live <laughs> webinar. Well, we do. Well, um, my my guess, without knowing for sure, is uh, how about Joe? If you try and make the window full screen, and do it. This this window. This yeah, because I see it's it's checking some Windows stuff. So I'm just like, and then remove the message box. See yeah. if it works. Yeah. Let me um. <clears throat> Boy, that's a hard thing to. Yeah, let me get rid of that message box. We launch it, and now highlight. There we go. Interesting. So this is what shows up. But um, to both Jackie and Dale's point, that copied that to the clipboard. Yeah. Right. Um, and <clears throat> what Dale had mentioned was one of the weird things about it is it only works on your main system window, your window, your main window monitor, whatever you want to call it. And apparently only windows of specific sizes. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah. We, we can probably find that in code, why that is. All right, Jackie, yeah. I'm going to, since, like I said, you're much better at this than I, I'm going to give you control. Oh. Start looking around. Um, mm. It's just easier, right, than you telling me what to do. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll, um, I'm sure of where to start. These, these two at the top here, those are just script settings, right? Single instance force is to force uh, our hotkey to only keep one of this script active at, at any one time. So forcing a single instance of the script. Uh, set patch lines minus one is to make the script run as quickly as possible. Um, uh, without saying too much about set script patch lines is oh, oh. that... Hmm. Hold on one second. I'm going to exit out of it because it's... Every time you lift up the mouse, it's <laughs> running. So, oh, go ahead. enough. Yeah. Making a sound. Yeah. Okay, so set patch lines minus one means that the script won't do any pausing between a set amount of lines. And I know that the setting for set batch lines was changed a good amount of versions back. Um, in the beginning, it was always D 
defaulting to every 20 lines, it would give a small sleep, like 10 milliseconds, just to give the CPU queue time to process other stuff. But yeah, minus one would make it not do that. Court mode mouse screen means that all mouse coordinates, so every command you use below here um, that has to do with mouse coordinates would be relative to the screen. That's kind of what line eight there is doing. This one, that's a variable just to kind of name the script something. It's probably using this variable somewhere below to kind of give the icon a name or the GUI or whatever it might be. And these, I can't remember. Um, if I go here, does it go through if I press that? It did. Okay, so just to kind of look at what um, Looks like you're going to have to hit the search and do it again. At, apparently. That yeah. one didn't go through. Um, let's just get there. This one gets system variables. So stuff that your system knows about itself. This is a command to go and retrieve those things. So retrieves screen resolution, multi-monitor information, dimensions, <clears throat> system options, and stuff, stuff and stuff. So if we go down here and look for uh, which one of them was he using? Oh, just just get, and then he's using the x drag and the y drag variables as his output variable, and then he's using a number where it says monitor here. He's instead using the optional number. If we go down here, we should be able to see here numeric verb up output variable and a number. And then let's see if we can find 68 and 69, see what those are. Mm, somewhere, somewhere. So they were apparently a combination perhaps of something. Let's see if we can scroll down further. Did I remove focus? Not commonly used 60, no, there. So 68 and 69 are system monitor C X drag and system monitor C Y drag. So he's, he's just cut off some of it and made it into a Y drag and an X drag and putting whatever the system knows. And here we can read that this, it's the so the width, the height of a rectangle centered on drag point to allow for limit, limited movement of, I'm moving it because I actually can't read it because of stuff on my own screen. Uh, allowed for limited movement of the mouse pointer before a drag operation begins. These values are in pixels. It allows the user to click and release the mouse button easily without unintentionally starting a drag operation. Dave, I, I'm unsure how sure what exactly those are. I think it is to know how much you should move the mouse in pixels before a drag operation starts. It's kind of like if we read more into it, he now knows how far the mouse should have moved from the click down to the click up for it to have been a mm. dragging operation, right? So that's what he gets in those two pixels. Mm. This are his any read that's most likely for settings. Yeah. This is for his tray menu. We didn't see much into that, but you did operate it and we saw there was an enable and some other stuff down there. You can look at that further now. If start the disable one equals one, I'm not sure what that tells us right now, but we can look it up later. Go to 
SWAP or swap. Let's figure out what that is in a moment. And here he takes over the um, control C uh, action. What happens if someone actually clicks control C? It goes into the subroutine copy. We can probably find that further down. Into and just to clarify, right, in front of each one of these hotkeys we see on the screen right now, there's the tilde. Oh, yeah. And that basically, it says, like, let it pass through, right? Note that it happened, but don't stop it from sending it to whatever it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. If this was like so, your normal uh, control C uh, copying operation wouldn't happen. Our hotkey would simply intercept those two keys and um, swallow them, so to speak. So it wouldn't let it pass on to Windows or the window beneath. And the tilde um, simply uh, allows that. So it's a way for our hotkey to just do something on that key action, but without actually blocking the key action. So you could just as easily have it on a C, and each time you type the C, <laughs> uh, what it would do would it would pass into this, <clears throat> but the C would still go to the program. Yeah, it's just a way of putting it. Looking for that, yeah. Oh, that did not work correctly, like so. And goes up, going to the copy. I'm just seeing here. Oh, it's down here. We'll get to that. Or should we go there? I mean, no, we'll we'll go over the mouse keys first. So that's a hot key, and that's a subroutine. It goes to, and this is the same. That's a hot key. That whenever the mouse button is clicked. And inherently, um, or default, or whatever way you put it, these act on mouse down. That's the normal way of doing it. Um, when there is a mouse up. If there is no mouse up, it would act on... Do you remember that, Joe? I can't remember if the default is that it would then act on the up. A lot of programs act on the up event. Yeah, um, they do. And I can't remember what our hotkey's default is. Of course, you could, if you wanted to force it to act on the down, you could put that there. But I only think it, it defaults to down if you have used the up somewhere. Hmm. But don't, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But as soon as you click, and hold, for that matter, the, um, the left mouse button, then all it actually does is it goes in, uses the mouse get pose, so get the mouse position, stores the X and the Y uh, point or coordinate, um, and the window ID under your mouse. Do you, do you get what, what that means? So uh, one of the things that I could explain that with was if I click the mouse over here, then it would store the pun point from the screen and the ID of PowerPoint. If I did it over here, it would still store the exact whatever coordinate this point is, but um, ID of um, studio instead. Mm -hmm. That is what that line there is doing. So it's storing both the coordinates and the ID of the window it's done on. And then we get to the next hotkey here, which is where it acts when you then release the mouse button. And here it does actually the exact same thing as it did up here, just different variable names. It stores the current point and the current window ID. Then here it goes in and does a var set capacity. That's when you do um, more advanced variable uh, stuff where objects or memory structures might be a better way of putting it. Um, and it's for this Dell call here to work. 
So you go in, you get the client, right? you get the wrecked ankle of the window or the client. Do you get what I'm saying? I hope you do. So you get the screen error that the current window or not the current window, that's wrong. You get the screen area of a windows rectangle on screen. So you get the Y and the X and the size or the width or whatever. And he's doing it on with the variable old win ID. And that's the one from the down event. So that was the window that you clicked down on. And it's being put into the variable that we made ready up here. We made a variable that was able to store 16 bits, right? The, this one tells it to use the memory address. That's because it's a dull call and dull calls needs to know where in memory to store the structure. And by saying, we are going to make a variable in memory somewhere with the size of 16. Then we tell the Dell call that in this memory location, we'll, we want you to store the information that we're asking for. And then we use numget to get a number out of a specific location. In this one, we are saying that this rect variables first location, zero, zero base location, get a number from there and store it in this variable, rect left. Lo looking at the documentation of get client rec or rectangle, um, you'd be able to know which um, offset they're stored at. So numget goes in, starts at zero, gets the left point, gets the top point, gets the right point, and gets the bottom point in uh, screen coordinates. Uh, so here, and here you have an if, let's put an extra one in here, and the next one in here, just to see, and we have that one there as well, fair enough. So this one should, actually be um, indented like so. Yeah. So if the window ID, this is from the up event, is equal to the old win ID that is from the down event, that was, um, then this thing is true. And if another if, if the, um, the new x is lower than the old s, x, well, minus the, the, the amount of pixels we got up here, the allowed amount of movement to do with your mouse before starting a drag event. He's just checking, have something been dragged? Is, is this a dragging event that's being checked here? So uh, is that larger than the X allowed drag or is it um, higher, lower, and the same for the Y, both higher and lower? If that's true, it's the same window and a dragging event within the allowed amount of pixels for it to be a tracking event is true, then we'll check some more. We'll then check is the old Y, this one, within, a, you know, here from it being higher or equal to the left, being lower or equal to the right, being higher or equal to the top, being, so he's actually checking, did you uh, release the, um, or press the bottom within the window area? The, the, uh, hopefully I'm still making sense. Yeah. 
So this here is just checking, did you drag your mouse and did you do it within uh, one window? So if let's say you made a file dragging or if you dragged one window from one place to another or stuff like that, then these things wouldn't be true. And thereby there was no need to do um, the copy subroutine. So it's just to make it only act on something that is most likely to be a text selection. So it's an attempt to kind of know when a selection has happened because now nothing on the system tells you that text has been selected. And uh, for the most part, if you can do the copying quickly enough, you could probably um, uh, skip this part, depending on your need. But yeah, again, yeah, the, it depends. <clears throat> so everyone listening, um, this was, it's a, it's a pretty, it's got some advanced stuff and a lot of cool stuff that if you're writing a really robust script that you would do, but there's, you know, um, Maestrith actually, I asked him to take a look at it and he rewrote a simpler way. It's not as fancy, but it does a lot of the same stuff and it's much more concise and short. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so a lot of this, and that's a lot of what Schmummel did in a lot of his, he made stuff that just works size, for right. the thing that he thought. He yep. tried to make complete programs that everybody could use. And if you do something that works on your system, if you don't think in as many use cases as you can, you'll um, run into people not being able to use it in the way that you intended because something on their system. And stuff like this is most likely here to prevent it from doing weird stuff on other people's systems. Oh. Um, here he's then what he, he's storing the tick count. And if people are unsure what the tick count is, it's a, a counter that the um, OS most likely, or the BIOS or whatever part of the system is keeping from the last Stidart point. It will just every millisecond, it will make one tick. So each time the system has been running for one millisecond, this counter will increase. So this is a fair way of knowing how long has the computer been running and it can be used for simple timers to know how long has passed since something. So right now he's storing the tick count and then he's uh, storing the tick count again. He's actually just storing the same thing twice. He could just as easily have done it with an expression. You know, we have done that before, Joe, where if 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 this hasn't had instead looked like uh, just making a small change here, like this and uh, like so, and removing those, and he would have gain, gained the exact same effect and could have, uh, not use this line, but yeah, that's, that's again, there's a lot of ways to optimize stuff. Um, <clears throat> here he is taking an environmental, um, action. He's using this, oh, what's the right, right word? Sub subtraction, environmental environment, environment variable subscribe subtraction blah, blah, blah. that's hard for me to actually say but what he's doing is that because he's doing it this way he is what something up here kind of went weird from what i know this old ticks here hasn't actually been set if this is the very first run hmm. It's probably being set. Yeah, it's being set down here. So the first time this is done, 
this one here would give you no actual subtraction because this would be zero. So subtracting zero from the difference in tick count would tell you, oh, this hasn't happened before. There's no differentiation between this time and the last time because this is the first time. Uh, it's a way of knowing when did we actually um, go into this subroutine before. And he's checking it here. He then uses different diff difference in ticks is lower than 400. This means that the last time we did this part here is less than 400 milliseconds ago. So if that's the case, then do this check here. It's when this is true, that's one thing. Then he's checking the time, but okay, if it was longer than whatever ago, then we'll do the copy anyway, if these are true. So he's checking two different ways. So this one up here checks for it being the same window with, is it a tracking event? Fair enough, then do a copy. This one down here checks, is it within a specific size, within a specific uh, window area? And then it checks here to see how long ago were we here last. Does, does it make, I'm, I'm hoping that what I'm saying still makes sense to everybody because I'm just rambling or I feel like I'm rambling, but I'm trying to explain it at least. And that's, that's what this does. So it starts up here, gets the pose of the mouse, gets the size of the window below the mouth, mouse, uh, checks the mouse's position compared to the window, checks the time since when we uh, did a dragging event last time, and, and that's what this does. And if any of these are true, it will go down into this subroutine that we'll get to in a moment. By the way, Dale asked about the, uh, the red and green on the left side, the little next to the numbers. Um, and that's oh, just, these? Yeah. yeah. That's just studio, right? Telling you what's changed and what's been saved. Yeah. From... Yeah, that's correct. It's just to tell you that either stuff has been, yeah. Small changes like me changing the uh, indention up here. Uh, I did that a moment ago where it was actually placed differently uh, like so. And just because I, I did some changes uh, it's trying to tell me that. Um, the same with this one being red, that's also just a symptom of a studio trying to color. So sa save the script, hit control S, and then I think those all go away, right? How oh, they all become green. green. Yeah. Okay, so here, um, this is just a way for you to force uh, it to do the copy. So kind of getting around this yeah. part up here. Uh, so if you hold down shift or control uh, while your mouse is down and let go of it, it will automatically do the copy. It won't do all of the checks for time. It won't do checks for the window and being within the window frame and stuff like that. So by using shift or control while the mouse is down, you can kind of force the copy action to happen. And then you have the copy um, subroutine here. Looking at that, it will start by waiting 400 milliseconds, wait for double click to select. Okay, it's probably something that he experienced when he made it, that that's a good thing to have. Who knows? 
it's okay. It's probably the same thing that he's checking for here. Clipboard all. He's simply storing what's already on the clipboard before making the copy action. Just for your sec, or if you had whatever binary data, an image in your clipboard, or whatever it might be. And then he's clearing the clipboard. Then he's sending the copy command with the control C, which is the most common way of doing copies. And then he's using the clip wait command, wait one second for the clipboard to contain data. And that's what he up here made ready for. He the, the clipboard empty here is for this command to work. For clip wait to work, it waits for the clipboard to contain data. Mm -hmm. It means it doesn't wait for the clipboard to contain a new data. No, no, no. It right. waits for the clipboard to contain any data. So unless the clipboard is completely empty, when you do the copy command, the clip wait command would immediately just pass through because, hey, the clipboard already has data. It doesn't care if it's new data, or old data, or something you copied an hour ago. If it has data, then the clip wait command or will immediately be passed over as being true. Oh, there's data in it, fine. Here, clip wait one will wait that one second for it to contain data. In almost any cases, uh, waiting for one second for the clipboard to, command, to contain data after you send the control C, for it to take longer than one second, then you're copying something really big or it's not gonna happen, so. Well, and to re restate that, Jackie, because it'll wait up to one second, right? Yeah. If, it, if it has it before that, it doesn't still wait, it's, it goes faster. Yeah, yeah, exactly what I'm trying to say, right? If, if, if anything happens that makes the clipboard contain data, and that could be because you didn't clear it, then it would contain data, or it can be because you cleared it and then send a command that would put data into it. As soon as it contains data, that could be immediately, or that could be in 500 milliseconds, or it could be in one and a half milli or one and a half seconds. And with going with the one here, if it takes longer than one second, then this command will set the error level to something, depending on if it contained or if it didn't contain data. And instead of checking the error level, he, and he checks the clipboard. If the clipboard is empty after that one second has passed, <laughs> then he will just put the old clipboard data back into it. So if you look here, if the copy routine is gone into for some reason, whatever it might be, within one and a half seconds or one second and 400 milliseconds, you didn't actually select anything where, uh, that could be copied, then whatever you had on the clipboard would just be restored. So every one and a half, one second, 400 milliseconds, 1.4 seconds might be a better way of putting it. Every 1.4 seconds, it would just restore your data. So you wouldn't actually know that each time I did something like that weird action here, it might have actually gone through whatever is here and figure out, oh, he didn't select anything but I did actually make the movement. Here I'm clicking at this point and dragging to the right. I'm actually making a dragging action. Oh, I selected something. I was supposed to not select something. So I'm holding the mouse down and dragging to the right, but I'm not selecting anything. Mm. But this script would think that I'm now doing what it's told I right. should be able to do up here. But when it comes to this place, I'm not selecting anything. So it's not able to copy anything. 
and thereby it's just resetting it to whatever it was before. So even though it's actually doing this, you wouldn't notice because nothing really happened on your end. And if it did contain data, then go into tray info. And that's the one you showed earlier, Joe, where it actually used, um, did a notification, right? Right, which actually, well, and that's what, you know, what I realized was I showed you, Jackie, but I don't think I, mm. let's, um, let me, I'm gonna re, relaunch this, let's do this, and then I'm gonna use my screen clipping tool. There we go, so now people can see this is what gets displayed. It, for some reason, because it's a notification, it doesn't show up in Zoom. So people weren't seeing what was happening, but this is what gets displayed when it uses the tray info. Um, whatever you have highlighted, it shows you the number of characters, number of words, number of lines. <clears throat> yeah, and tells you it was copied. So yeah, oh, and actually, let's, need. by the way, so in settings here, you can adjust, you know, some of the stuff, which is cool, right? He built in flexibility that you can you can tell it what to do and how to react to certain things. Um, given our timing, I know Dale, I should, maybe he already did leave, but I don't know if you're still on here, Dale, but, um, oh, he, he said he's popping off, he'll hurry back. Um, but I was gonna say, what do you think, do you think we should bother with the, in all the any settings? Um, cause to me, they're just kind of, they're interesting. I don't know if it's, cause it's, you know, it's, uh, you got another 300 lines of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say I wanted to go over the copy part and yeah, and, and that's about it because the tray info part and the inner read part might be interesting enough, but it's kind of doing other stuff. Yeah, and, and, I, and we know from Dale's email, it's outside of what he's actually really interested in. Um, yeah. So let me, let me demonstrate, and now this one didn't do exactly what Dale wanted, but we can do some tweaks to it, but let me pull it in here. Uh, and I'll try, try not to laugh, but the name of this script was Drag King, um, which in today's climate, I thought that was kind of funny. So um, I, when I when when Maestrit did his, I, of course, named it Drag Queen, um, which might not go over so well with some people. But um, so this, and I, I added some comments. Um, this down here, by the way, is uh, his, just Maestrit's tooltip, right, for displaying data, which I don't think Dale even wants necessarily. He, he's not using, he's not looking for that. He just wants it. Let me exit the script. He wants it set up where I'm gonna launch this version. When you highlight stuff, then see, notice it did, it did the number of words. Um, it, it, it shows it in a tool tip instead of that. And then it actually shows you the text, the tool tip. Let's see, it's right here. The time is for two. Let's put it for five, six. I'll relaunch it so it stays up a little longer. Um, we'll do something smaller. So that now there's two words, eight characters, lines, and then it shows actually the text. Um, and what was throwing me was in that other script that, that um, Scrommel did was like, you know, the thing's over 400 lines and it granted some of the stuff probably was needed for, for as Jackie mentioned, like in every use case scenario. Oh, uh, well, what if I drag from this window to another window? Like, wouldn't I want to take that into account? Yeah, that's that's not a bad idea. Um, personally, I, I'm like, wow, you know what? This thing is down to, in reality itself, it's 17 lines, but we don't even need, he also, we had say, if you hit control T, it'll show back up um, what you had selected. So this could actually be commented out because it's not really, it's just a handy thing to have. Um, yeah, and the lines below that, the T one, if, if we ain't even showing it, right. as we talked about that. Yeah it really depends on what you need and right. uh, if you don't want if you don't need it to count words or count lines or tell you how many characters were there then you can also save three lines on that yeah. so if you just want something that copies when you drag yeah so this i'm going to relaunch it when i highlight it now it's thrown into a message box right but um, ironically, I shouldn't have done that exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can see it's working, right? And I think this is the functionality that, so so actually, Jackie, we also don't even need these things, right? Because this was getting the counts of the words and the yeah, lines. exactly. And that's why I said you could okay. remove even three more lines. I'm sorry. I and, wasn't. And no, because you were changing the 
flip, so that's fine. But yeah, the, the general idea of looking at these lines that are there now yeah. is that you have the L button up, which is the only event that you truly need to know when it's a good idea to do the copying. Then you have um, an emptying of the clipboard. And then you have a while clipboard, which is, mm, it's okay, but I did hear Lecticos at one point say, it happens instantly. Mm. It's a command sent used within Windows. So when you do clipboard equals empty, yeah. it doesn't pass to the next line until the clipboard is supposed to be empty. Mm -hmm. And I know Chad has done way more with the clipboard than me. So he has probably experienced weird stuff with it. So right. if he feels like a, a while loop to check the clipboard is an okay thing, it shouldn't slow down anything, but I'm just unsure how often it would really be a use case for you right. to have to wait for the clipboard to be empty. Because in most cases, it should just be empty as soon as you get past the emptying line. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the clip weight. Right. I've had a good amount of users on the forums and stuff say, oh, clip weight doesn't always work. And I've used it thousands of times. And if you do the steps before, making sure the clipboard is emptied and making sure that something is put in to uh, the clipboard afterwards, clip weight has worked for me in every case. I've yet to find a program where it doesn't work because it doesn't have anything to do with the program. The only thing that I've seen have issues is with the sending of control C because as soon as you send control C to a window, the window and the speed of the program the control C is sent to decides how quickly to mm. act on that. So when I send control C to studio, how quickly studio then acts on control C and puts its data in the clipboard. Yep. That's a variable unknown to our hockey. Sure. sure. So having a clip weight of let's say one, some programs, weird programs might not be able to do it within a time frame of one yep. or two or whatever. I, I couldn't say what it was, but I've seen it with the paste command more than anything that if you say, say send control V and then immediately restores the clipboard's data to something you had there before, then the pasting of your data failed because you actually restored the clipboard data before the paste command had happened. Do you get what I'm saying? Yep. There is this time delay of how quickly a window actually ha acts on an input command like control C or control V. But yeah, in most cases, this is very simple. Empty the clipboard, send control C, and then wait for the clipboard to contain the data yeah. and act on it afterwards. It, you know, it, I'm curious, Jackie, back in on the other version, this, this whole bit at the beginning with the, the monitoring of which window you're in um, and all this stuff, I, and we're not critiquing Schrammel's work, right? Not, not in that sense. No. But um, it, I mean, to me, the odds of needing this seem low, but I, I don't know. What are, you, what are your thoughts? The um, uh, thing is, if you're afraid of sending control C too much, because you're working in programs that does something differently, or if you're afraid of, use, of, of losing data you have on the clipboard, mm. or something like that, whatever it might be, 
that might be the reason why you want to limit how often control C is sent to, because each time you lift the mouse. Which we noticed when, we're, when it was running and you were trying to do stuff, we're like, oh my God, it's, it's every time, right? Yeah, yeah and, and with the version drag queen, as you had, <laughs> yeah. uh, every time you lift the mouse, right. a control C is sent. Right. Every single time. And that might mm, have some kind of negative effect in some situations. And to kind of limit that, Scrum will try to do some stuff. Well, and the first thing I would do if I was doing this, because this would probably more often than not pertain to very specific programs. And so yeah. I would tie this with the when, if when active, just to limit it only working in those windows where I want it to work. Yeah, yeah. and as you said yourself, this one is, it doesn't have the limitation that Dale talked about, where he had an issue with it only working on his main right. uh, uh, his monitor, main. because this one doesn't take that into account whatsoever. Right. But it doesn't take stuff like, did I actually make a drag um, right. event happen? This one just acts on the mouse up. Every single mouse up you ever do will send a copy and command. So, so yeah, a lot of what we see in Squamel's one is to try and limit how often the copying happens. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was why also, which I had first commented out line eight, um, and it was driving me nuts because if I just click somewhere, it would still come up with that message box every time in line nine. And I'm like, wait a minute here, that this if here is really helpful that, hey, if there's no data there, don't don't show me a message box that there's nothing there, right? It's Yeah, and, and if you then build in what he built in, that it will restore your previous data uh, from the clipboard, then you would keep getting a message box of whatever you right. copied uh, five minutes ago or whatever. Right. So, so yeah, it, it does make sense to kind of build in some of those limitations, whatever they might be, and depending on whatever use case you have. Yeah, um, it, so, and it's a very good point about the use case, right? Because for every person using this thing, it's gonna be very different. Because the other thing I would add to this, instead of automatically restoring, because, hey, you got something in your clipboard you probably want to use, I don't want to restore my old clipboard, I just put this in here for a reason, right? So. I would have another hotkey, like maybe control R or something that would then, after I go and paste this where I wanted it, then it will restore my original, if I want to, I can restore the original content of the clipboard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Or maybe could you monitor for a control V first? Yeah, you, yeah, you, you could do almost anything like that. But I, I at one point had, this was one of my very, very first scripts because it actually had to do with copying stuff. And it was that instead of using control C to copy, I would just use control one, two, three, four, and have oh, the right. ability to store up yeah. to, and it was very simple. So I just had the ability to store it nine different things in uh, variables. Right. And each time I then did um, control shift one, it would then paste whatever it was in variable one. And uh, all at the beginning, it even, it, it just made an input command, whatever string was in one, uh, until I figured out it was probably a better idea of restoring the data to the clipboard and then using the building pasting command. But yeah. You, you can do amazing stuff and you can build an entire clipboard manager if you want oh, to. Oh and man, there's dozens on the forum, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the other one I would mention just to FYI when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, it, it, you know, when I say this, because th both these approaches are doing it a better way is you could send the actual words like a variable, but it's literally sending each keystroke. And man, once you get longer and longer text, sending paste is so much more consistent, efficient, accurate, like in most programs, as opposed to trying to send those keystrokes. I, I almost always send clipboard nowadays. It's just faster and more reliable. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if I were to, and I'm just gonna type on screen here, if, if let's say I had, um, no, let, let's have a return there. 
um, if I did something new and just said that um, control five was, oh, I didn't actually make the, hmm. okay, okay. A, a little harder than doing it manually. I'm gonna interrupt you just for a second, Jackie. If, if um, anyone else here um, has something else to work on, start chiming in into the chat while Jackie's working on this. And yeah, 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 that's a good idea. It. The, the idea was, let's say I wanted to send string five here with this control fives thing. Um, so I have um, the variable five and in the variable five, I have um, a lot of fives, just whatever it might be. Um, and I could, each time I clicked um, control five, I could have my script uh, send uh, the variable five as, as a string like that. And if I go and save this and uh, save. Switch, uh, switch to site when you do it, because studio doesn't like. <laughs> yeah, uh, is it in tools I run it like that? And let me just see, switching to site. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, oh there. Wait a minute. Where'd it go? It's on the other screen. Yeah, sorry. There we go. Okay. So going here and then pressing Control 5. Did you see it actually on my end with screen updating and stuff like that? It actually could, took quite a bit of time. It did. And, yeah. and it could be sped up by maybe using a, the send input command just to kind of, of, of show the fastest way of sending those many fives. Um, yeah, going there's send, uh, over send here. Input and send event, right? Are the... Yeah, yeah, those are, so if, if I now press control five, the fives will wow. be there quite a lot faster yeah. because then the fives are sent to the Windows input stream, which is also quite a fast way of doing it. Um, but I could also instead do, um, and this string could be way longer than just these five, right. but I could just as easily as a clipboard and then um, put in the variable five in the clipboard and then i could say send v oh i didn't Control. actually uh, yeah. just me losing that key there um, and then by saying save and saying tools run and then switching to this one uh, now clicking Control five will give me the same result, but now I'm using the clipboard to paste it in. And that is, at least for almost any use case, the fastest way of getting a string into another program. Because, it, yeah. And that's where you would typically, because something like this, you would say, now go back and restore the original clipboard, right? First back it up and then restore it after, and you don't lose the clipboard. Yeah, exactly. I, I could I could just as easily have built in that that exact thing here, with um, let's say a, a clip, and then say clipboard. Uh, oh, all sorry, yeah. all. Which will give the uh, every like if it's a picture or image or a file or whatever, right? It'll store that. Yeah, clip all all is. Um, is whatever the clipboard has in any format that it has it in. It's the full clipboard's data that's being put into this variable. So if let's say the clipboard had an image in it and you, let's say, tried to um, send clip to a window, it wouldn't do anything because you might not be able to paste the image there, but yeah. It depends on whatever. It might also be a file or a path or binary data, or it could be anything. Mm -hmm. But you then said whatever. And then we get to the one that I talked about where here I would put in like a sleep. 
and yeah, then very 200. Uh, oh, it's not very, very, it. very important to sleep there. And the reason that I'm putting a sleep after the paste command is that for the window that's getting the control V sent to it, it needs to have some kind of amount to process the paste. Because if I just immediately restored um, the clipboard here, said clipboard uh, equals uh, clip, then before it, it the missed paste, an A in there and clipboard. Oh, yeah. I knew it looked wrong. I couldn't put my finger on it, but yeah, I see it now. There you go. There, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, if I just did this, in many cases, it, it, it would work fine. Most programs that ain't doing something else would be able to almost instantaneously process to control the, the paste. But programs that are doing something differently, or if your computer is currently buckered down with something, you might have this command happen before the window actually processes this command. Mm -hmm. Our hotkey will send this. Oh, here, take your control V, and then it will continue on to restoring the clipboard as it was told and then continue on to whatever else happens. But the window might need 200 milliseconds or 400 milliseconds or whatever to receive the control V and then, oh, I need to paste something in and then say, what's in the clipboard? Oh, something that you restored just seconds ago. I'll paste that. Yeah, so a lot of people have had issues with that. Oh, so I this one needs to... Uh, Oh, that's not the correct command. You remove from there and go there. And this one, whatever you need. How quickly do you really need the clipboard to re-restore it to its previous data? How fast are you really typing? How many <laughs> commands are you doing each second? So you could probably put this to be 500 milliseconds. Yeah, it's still. This is just above the time it takes you to blink your eye. <laughs> takes 400 milliseconds. Not me, Jackie. I'm, I'm faster at blinking. I can, I can I do know. it. It's, <laughs> I know. It, it's a generalization that it takes 400 milliseconds to blink the eye. But I love to use it because I've helped a lot of people who play games and they say, oh, I needed to click every two milliseconds. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, you do not. It's awesome. It's just like, if, I think some of the fastest clickers in the world can click in maybe 30 milliseconds from they see it on the screen, but they couldn't continue doing it like that. Right. Because you wouldn't be able to process it that right. quickly anyway, because I think some of the fastest you can even register is at about 80 milliseconds. And that would be you walking down a dark street, seeing a branch on the ground looking like a snake and then you jumping before you actually looked at it. It's a reaction yeah. and that's at 80 milliseconds or a bear jumping out at you and you fleeing. Um, that's, that's the quickest we could actually. Just, just to bring it home, because also let's, because Brad says he has something, but oh. um, what I want to do is pause the, we'll stop the recording, start a second session since he has something. Um, but, but I do want to, you know, state, I, I always do this. Um, I have a sleep in here because I've been burned by it and, and it's just, it's just easy to have a little sleep in there and who cares? Um, it's just, it's worth it. Um, so. Yeah, and, and it only really makes sense after the paste command. Just, right. just so right. we're clear. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let me stop recording. Stop recording.